This is the Razer Blade 17, a laptop which inside holds an NVIDIA RTX 3080 Ti with 16 gigs of VRAM somehow. <laughs> For anyone keeping score at home, the 3080 is a really big GPU and it's powerful and they have found a way to put it in laptops, which means anybody who wants to use the power of a 30 series GPU and either needs to take their work home with them or I guess if you work from home and you wanna take your work elsewhere or just sit on the couch, you can do that with a laptop and you don't have to be tied to a desk. Today we're gonna to see how big of a deal that is, especially for creative work specifically. Roll the montage. As I understand it, I'm one of the first people to get my hands on this hardware, thanks to NVIDIA Studio who sponsored this video. And I'm sure there's gonna be a bunch of great videos from other great YouTube channels that will focus on hardware benchmarks and testing this for gaming, and in some cases, video editing. I'm gonna be focused on the creative work of 3D artists, because in case you're new here, hello, I'm Sir Wade. Uh, I'm a 3D character animator, visual effects artist, CG 3D stuff I make on the computer. Because whether it's Maya, Blender, Houdini, Unreal Engine, and so on, there's a lot of different creative applications, and that's what we're gonna be focusing on today from the perspective of someone who uses 3D work and is usually stuck on a desktop. Now, Blender comes with a benchmark tool, so let's start there. If we take the data from the 3080 Ti, which I have run the benchmarks, here you go. This is the data I have with Optics On, and if we run that against the 3080, you'll see that they're very similar. We don't lose very much performance at all going from desktop to laptop, which is incredible. If you'd like a reference point to compare against, this laptop has a 12th gen Intel processor, so we put that against a GPU, blows it out of the water, and I, on my desktop computer, have a 64 core Threadripper 3990X. This just completely destroys it. We can also pull the data for the Apple M1 MacBook and compare that, and the results speak for themselves. On average, the NVIDIA Studio laptops perform at about seven times faster at things like this in 3D applications than the newest MacBook Pro 16, which is a really fast laptop on its own, and these just dwarf it. But that's enough technical talk, let's actually see it in action. We'll come back to Blender to look at cycles in Eevee, but for now, I wanna switch it up. Let's look at Unreal Engine. The goal here is to have as much of a real-time workflow as possible. As a real-time engine, the whole goal of this software is to give you immediate results so that you can see exactly what the product's going to look like at the end while you work on it so that you don't have to guess and iterate as much and wait for things to happen. That's the whole point of a game engine and that's why Unreal is so powerful. But it does work best when you can use the actual ray tracing features that is are built into it. When you create a new project, it asks you, do you wanna turn ray tracing on or off? And most of the time people have to turn it off if they don't have the hardware for it. So with something like the 3080 Ti, we can set ray tracing to on and go into these giant scenes from the marketplace and just see how fast it goes. No problems working in this. The goal here is to be able to make creative decisions in modeling, texturing, animating, lighting, rendering, whatever it is, so quickly that you don't have to wait to be creative. You don't have to sit there for the computer to catch up with you so that you can move forward. So even on a laptop, we've got no waiting. And that's what's so cool about this. But if you're not using a real-time workflow and you're using something like Maya or Houdini, well, technically, actually, we can do a little bit. If we switch our viewport over to the Arnold viewport, we can do this. We can preview our materials, preview our lighting, and we can do it in real time as well. It's not quite the same as like a real-time workflow, but we can still see our results in real time. So that's great. And we can turn on denoising and all kinds of stuff to speed that up. Now I'm just beginning my journey into Houdini. So I, I, I thought this was fast. I thought I'd show you like, look, I can make fire and render it in mPlay. And someone who knows Houdini, you can tell me in the comments whether it's like, oh, that is really fast. That's amazing. Or if it's like, no, you didn't do that right. That's not actually, it's like, it's always that fast. I have no idea, but I thought I'd show you just in case. Now, jumping back to Blender, we're gonna just open up a scene and check out the real-time stuff. Here is Cycles. We're rendering on the 3080 Ti. And you can see that with all the settings cranked up, we're getting fantastic speed. You'd be able to work in this, add lights, change props, geometry. Now for the animators watching, if you use Maya, for example, and you animate and you don't render all that much, that's all cool, but what does this do for you? I don't have a way to show you this, but the 16 gigs of VRAM in there, if you don't have a ton of RAM on your computer or you have really intense scenes that you're animating that have a lot of geometry, cached playback is a newer feature in Maya from the past couple of years that you can just cache your scene and then you can play it at real time. You don't have to play blast and export your animation. You can just see it in the viewport. It can use the VRAM of your GPU. So there are still some benefits that the cards are gonna give you just in how it draws graphics on the screen, but the VRAM is also gonna come into play even if it's not using the rendering potential while animating. So just set your cache playback to hardware and it'll do that, so 
Pro tip. Now on top of the speed boost from using the 3080 Ti, there are a few other things it does as well, like leveraging the power of AI. If you haven't already seen my videos on NVIDIA Canvas, you should definitely check it out because Canvas is ridiculously cool. In a nutshell, you draw really simple shapes and stuff with their brushes, and those brushes will translate using AI into photorealistic landscapes. So you can use this for concept work, you can use it for matte painting, you can use it to project this stuff into your 3D scenes to create scenes super quick in minutes. I have a whole video where I show that workflow, so you can check out my channel for some other stuff there. But being able to make this type of stuff as quick and as easily as you can using the AI tools, for certain workflows, that's a game changer. And if it's not something that's already in your workflow, you can get creative and use it in really cool ways. Now, something that I bet a bunch of people watching haven't really looked into yet is Omniverse. If you haven't checked out NVIDIA Omniverse, it's a suite of tools that allows you to work collaboratively between people and between software. It's free, by the way. So is Canvas. I don't know if I mentioned that. But it leverages the USD file format, which I'm going to make some videos on Omniverse because it's just too cool not to. And I'm also going to be doing a video on a USD, which is Pixar's universal scene description format. To sum it up for you, it allows you to take data from Maya, Blender, Houdini, Unreal, it doesn't matter where it's from for the most part, it's being widely adopted throughout the industry, and you can take data from anywhere and just use it everywhere. You don't have to deal with like file formats not matching up and blah, blah, blah. It all just works everywhere. It's really cool, completely redefining the way pipelines work when leveraging this data, and it's fast. That's what's so cool about it, is you can do a lot of stuff very quickly, even on poor internet connections. But to show you an example, here I have a whole scene that I use Omniverse for. I can take data from Unreal, use the marketplace to just grab some cool stuff. I can bring that into Omniverse, and then I could light and render it, RTX, ray tracing, all the fancy stuff that we've been talking about. I can do all of that, and then I can connect my Maya session or Houdini or Blender, I can do stuff there and have it immediately also lit and rendered using this whole pipeline. The sessions can be live linked to talk to each other so that you can just update them. You can do things in pieces if you don't want to load everything. The point, like all of everything we've been talking about, is that you don't have to wait for iterations to be creative. You can just work on the stuff and you get to see what it's going to look like as you go, which just saves you time in the long run, which is especially useful for the 3D and animation industry because what we do takes a lot of time. So to be able to shave off any amount of time and any help we can get to make things faster, I'll take it. And to give you one last real world example of how I've been using this laptop over the last week, until about a week ago when this laptop showed up, I have been using a 2018 MacBook Pro and I had it all spec'd out, it was super expensive, and I hate it. It's I, I don't do any creative work on it. Like it works fine, it works great for a lot of things, but I don't use it for anything 3D. It just doesn't do very well with it. So, you know, why would I? I? I usually just prefer to wait until I get back to my desktop computer and then I do that and then I just suck it up and sit at my desk and I work on stuff. But I basically never do any creative work on it just because it doesn't do a very good job of it. And so I've needed a new laptop for a long time. This came at the perfect time because about a month ago, I actually signed on for a freelance project where I'm animating some characters to do kind of a Super Smash Bros fight style thing. I can't really show you the updates and the progress on it. That's all I can show. And since the laptop I use at home is not very well suited for this kind of work, I don't do it at home. So I stay here until 12 a.m. one in the morning working on it until about a week ago when I got this, I just put everything on here and I can take it to work and I can do stuff here and then I can take it home and I can sit on the couch or I can lay in bed or I can go to the counter and I can hang out with my wife and I can actually do normal life things and work and I have that flexibility and I have all the power of my desktop here. So that's been great. Just as a you know, life endorsement of having a powerful laptop. It's nice. But anyways, in the next month, I'm gonna be doing some motion capture stuff on this laptop. I just got a suit for the first time and I've never done mocap before. So I'll be learning that. And I'll also be making all the data I create available to you. So if you wanna get some motion capture experience on your resume, We'll learn together. It'll be great. So be sure to subscribe so you don't miss that. Like this video if you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching and a huge thank you to NVIDIA Studio for sponsoring this video and sending a new laptop that in my case was very much needed. I'm very excited about it. And if you would like to check out NVIDIA Studio laptops to consider for yourself, I'll put a link in the description down below where you can do some more research and check that stuff out. But thanks again for watching. I'm Sir Wade and I'll see you in the next video.